Okay, now let's look at a subject closer to home. Let's look at recreational hunting in Queensland. Now over the last couple of months, I've tried to put up clips on the legislation and the issues that we're facing. And a lot of people are saying, look, stop being so negative. Yeah, let's just get on with it. Show, show us how we could do this better. That's what I'm trying to do. But it's no use putting up a solution if people can't see the issues, the hills that we've got to climb over to get there. Because what happens is then people will run off on a tangent and say, let's have a system like, say, America. Let's have a system like Canada. Let's have a system like New Zealand without looking at the issues that we face. Now, I can give you the assurance that our team at Ridge has been looking at these issues for 30 years. And we have managed to come up with a solution that can work in this state of Queensland. It's a system we call Hunt Easy. Now, for it to get wings, for it to fly, for us to see better hunting options uh, available to everybody in this country that wants to hunt in Queensland, we've got to have cooperation. We've got to have cooperation between all the hunting groups but more so, we need to have cooperation between the hunters and the outdoor people and the landowners that have the major stake in all the country that has got game animals or feral animals running on it in this state. Without that, what we're going to see is a bloodbath. And a lot of our hunters that I know are actually pushing the situation in a direction and to me it's like going in the in the ring against Mike Tyson and giving him a bit of lip and saying that you're going to chew his ear off what's going to happen to you you're going to get flogged there's got to be a better way and what I'm trying to do is detail that to you so we can get support for a direction that will win this for us 50% of a big pie is worth a lot more than 100% of nothing. Okay, so people will be saying, what's your point, McGee? What point are you trying to make? Okay, I've just detailed right what we're working under. PIC, NVD, NLIS, LPA, and JBAS, just to name a few. As I've mentioned in previous videos, in this state of Queensland, we do not have game animals. All we have are pest animals as declared under the Biosecurity Act 214-218. That means you can't actually hunt in this state. All you can do is control feral and pest animals for the landowners on their pick numbers. That means you have to be a part of their LPA. Now to do this, you've got to be mindful of many different aspects from pest weeds, feral animals, chemicals, fire control, vegetation control, native animals, OH&S and insurance, all of these things plus many more you have to be right up to speed with if you are going to enter that landowner's property. This is the first time that I've been here on this new landowner's property and uh, he said he had a little bit of giant rat's tail grass but no parthenium. Well I'm up here this is an access road that comes in out of uh, State Forest, comes onto his freehold country here. And look at this. That's Parthenium. Now, we'll come back now here and uh, spray this, all this area, treat this area. But because we found this, and I'll, I'll lock it in on our Venza mapping program, I'll put it in. We can come back here and treat this weed. It's everywhere here, but only in this little patch. Um, if we treat this now, this has got the potential to save this, this landowner millions of dollars over the next de few decades. If this stuff gets away on this country down here, it literally will devalue his property. Um, yeah, it could devalue it by 20, 30%. So this is what hunters can do to help the landowners. Now to me, there's a great avenue available here to us if we want to take it. If you treat the landowner with res respect, sincere respect, not a two-faced respect, just because you want to get onto their property to hunt. But if you actually do 
respect and admire these country people, some of the best, decent, hardworking people you'll ever meet, okay? If you treat them fairly, there's no reason why those landowners should not be allowed to give you permission to access their lease country for hunting as part of the LPA. Now, to me, we have a great opportunity here to do something really significant for recreational hunting in this state. The pathway is already there. It's, it only needs a, a few small changes to legislation. It does not need a lot. This actually gives us a huge avenue to pursue when it comes to state forest hunting. In this state, there is millions of acres of state forest land that is worked under cattle grazing permits of these landowners. Now, these were called leases till recently, and some of these have been in the landowners' uh, hands for over 100 years. And they treat them very much as part of their whole overall primary production business. And if we don't get the legislation right, we're going to see the choppers in the air more and more right across all our country. And one of these days, we won't have the deer or the pigs or the goats to hunt like we have seen for generations. We could lose this. So let's look at a scenario here to probably better illustrate what I'm talking about. Now, righto, you're out there watching this and you've got your bristles up because McGee's trying to tell you what to do with your hunting. You believe you've got a right to get in there into state forest. I'm a public land owner. I own that country. Rah, rah. And you'll go on and on and you'll write nasty comments and all the rest of it. Well, go for it. Now, let's look at this scenario for a little while. Let's say you've got a rich old uncle that dies tomorrow. God bless him. He dies and he leaves everything to you. So all of a sudden, here you are, it's just like you've won the lotto. And you go up into the Brisbane Valley and there's that property that you've always snuck into. You've managed to poach in there quite a few times, sneak in and sneak out. You love that area. And all of a sudden, there it is for sale. And you've got the cash in the bank to buy that property. So the next thing you know, you're up there with a the wife, and the little kids, your little billy lids, and you've bought yourself a 5,000 acre deer property in the headwaters of the Brisbane Valley. All of a sudden, the boot's on the other foot. Because all of a sudden, you'll hear a shot in your back paddock, and there's one of your mates in there poaching one of your deer. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to say, all good people, everybody come in here, everybody can shoot as many as you want, as often as you want. Is that what you're going to do? I don't think so. Suddenly you're going to be the landowner and you're going to say, hey, you only come in here with my permission. So all of a sudden you're going to be hated by your mates. All right? You're going to say, hey, let's manage these sustainably. I don't want them all wiped out. I love these deer. I love hunting them. I want them here for my kids and their kids. What are you going to do then if you go into your state forest cattle grazing permit area that you've managed to buy with this property. And there's people coming through the gates saying, hey, we're public landowners. You don't have a right to stop us coming through here. And there you are. You've just joined up with LPA under biosecurity and you've signed all the documentation and you've got to be responsible for pest weed control and feral animal control and maintenance of fences and everything else, and bushfires, OH&S, all the things that you've got to be, be responsible for. So what the first thing you'll do is you'll lock all the gates because you can't have people driving through there, dumping their rubbish, starting fires, shooting your cattle, shooting the deer. You can't have all that, so you're going to lock the gates. And I said one of the things that really, you know, really burrs landowners up is when they're going along, not just when somebody comes in, you know, on their country without permission, but when they, you know, drive along the road and here's a big pile of butt tags on the side of the road where someone's dropped one and did not even have the decency or the ethics to cover it. 
not even get some leaves or a rock or dirt and, and cover it. And we come up to the front gate. Here's our front gate over here. And here's the big pile of butt tags. Here's a classic example that happened the other day. A couple of guys following tracks that had been put on their maps by somebody else. What do you know, fellas? What? What do you know? Well, who are you? Just to ask some questions. Well, well the representative of the landowner. Sorry? The representative of the landowner, you're trespassing. Uh -huh. Okay. Can I have your names, please? We haven't gone through your locked gates or anything yet. You've gone through a gate down there. You went right past the centre where people are. These guys, they turned out to be really good blokes and they're welcome back any time with permission. We didn't know we were could, could, Yes, you did. No, we didn't. Could, know you, didn't you, mean, you mean you got no phone on you? You got no GPS? Yeah, around there next to Yeah, the you got a GPS we're, there? Yeah, we're just the following the road to show yeah. them out. Could I? But what it does mean is that the front gates and side gates from now on will all be locked. So that's how quickly things can turn from the have to a have not. Okay, it could be as simple as a gold lotto win or a rich relative that kicks the bucket. But for most people, it has been generation after generation of bloody hard work that's allowed them to have a property like this. And then here we are, as hunters that want to access that country, treating them with disrespect. Stop for a little while and think what it'd be like to have the boot on the other foot. Righto? And if you can do that, you'll see where I'm coming from. Righto? We treat these landowners then with respect, sincere respect, not a two-faced respect just to get access to their country. You respect that landowner as you would want to be respected yourself. Once you can do that, then there's a great avenue available to us where we can go to those landowners and say, listen, we want to be part of your business here. We want to be part of your rural production enterprise. Can we control the feral animals on your property for you? And if that landowner says, yes, you can do that, but I want a fee for it to cover the cost of looking after you, the cost of extra insurance and whatever, then don't feel put out by that. Strike a fair deal with that landowner. That's what we've been talking about for 30 years in the Ridge Group. And that's the system that we've developed that we call Hunt Easy. I'm not saying that we've got to pay a fortune for every deer we shoot. It works. It's been working for generations now. And it could work right across the state. One thing that most people are forgetting here, that a a deer will eat, because it's a ruminant, will eat 2.7 to 3% of its live weight in dry matter per day. Okay, so if you want to just crunch the numbers on that on a 100 kilo hind, what it eats in compared to, say, a 700 kilo cow, and I know it eats a lot of weeds and it eats a lot of things, a lot of lantana and whatever that cattle don't eat, but let's say there's 10 red deer to every cow out there then you can suddenly start to work out what each deer costs that landowner on their property. Now, that landowner can recover the cost of those animals per year. And you're helping them with weed control, feral dog control, wild pig control, property security, all those things, then you're seen as an asset to that landowner. And that's the system that we've promoted for generations now and it works. Hunt easy. What I'll try and do from now on, I'm going to try and detail the hunt easy system, how it came about, what research we did, and how we see the future, including the way that we can take hunt easy from a private freehold block that a landowner has and how it can be put onto state forest cattle grazing uh, country easily without anything more than slight changes to legislation. If we did this, it would open up millions of acres to recreational hunters like that. Thanks for watching.